Hello dear children. Welcome you all back to chemistry class. In today's class, we are going to begin with the 7th chapter, Air and Atmosphere. You have already learnt in your classes that the surface of the earth is surrounded by a layer of mixture of gases. Now this layer of mixture of gases is known as the atmosphere. Mixture of gases is commonly known as air. Now this mixture of gases, it extends up to hundreds of kilometers from the surface of the earth. And this air, it is present in the colorless and in the odorless form of matter. We all know that air is so much important for the survival of life on earth. About one-fifth of the air contains oxygen and remaining four-fifth of the air contains nitrogen. And there is a very small percentage of carbon dioxide and noble gases that are present in air. We also know that the composition of air changes from one place to another. That is, when we go up the atmosphere, the composition of air changes. That is, as we move up, that is, as the altitude increases, the composition of air changes. So, composition of air is different in different layers of the atmosphere. So, now let us see what are the different layers of the atmosphere and how is the composition of air different in each of these layers. So, now as you have already learned in your classics, the different layers of the atmosphere are as you see here, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere and thermosphere. Troposphere, it is at a distance of 0 to 10 kilometers above the surface of the earth while stratosphere is at a distance of 10 to 50 kilometers. Mesosphere is just above the layer stratosphere. It is at a distance of 50 to 80 kilometers from the surface of the earth and the layer called thermosphere which is far from the surface of the earth that is up to 80 to 320 kilometers above the surface of the earth. Troposphere is the layer of the atmosphere that contains most of the air and oxygen. Now it is this layer where weather conditions are formed. While stratosphere is the layer of the atmosphere that contains the ozone layer. Now we all know that ozone layer protects life on earth from harmful ultraviolet radiations of the sunlight. So stratosphere contains this layer called ozone layer which protects us from the sun. Now the next layer is mesosphere. Mesosphere is the layer which is considered to be very cold. And it is in this layer where most of the meteors are burnt up. And thermosphere is the layer that is far away from the surface of the earth. And it is in this layer where most of the satellites are present. So these are the different layers of the atmosphere. And in each of these layers, the composition of air is different. We know that air is so much essential for the survival of life on earth. Same like that, water is equally important for the survival of life on earth. Now we already know that about three-fourth of the surface of the earth or around 75% of the earth's surface is covered by water. Now this water layer that is present on the surface of the earth, it contains dissolved air in it. Now this dissolved air, it contains oxygen gas. So oxygen gas is more dissolved in water compared to the oxygen that is present in the atmospheric air. Now we know that one-fifth of the air contains oxygen and remaining four-fifth of the air contains nitrogen gas. But nitrogen gas is not much soluble in water compared to that of oxygen gas. So oxygen gas, it is dissolved in water compared to that of the oxygen or the amount of oxygen that is present in the atmospheric air. 
Now let us go in to learn a little about the history of discovery of air. In the year 1674, a scientist named John Mayo, he proved that air is a mixture and it contains two components and the components are active component and an inactive component. In the year 1774, another scientist named Joseph Priestley, he discovered that the active component in the air is oxygen gas. So he discovered oxygen gas by heating mercury oxide in a hard glass test tube. Later in the year 1789, another scientist named Antoine Lavoisier, he is the scientist who named the active component and the inactive component of air. So he named the active component of the air as oxygen gas and the inactive component as nitrogen gas. Now after the discovery of argon that is the noble gas argon by William Ramsey later William Ramsey and William Travers they have discovered other noble gases like helium, neon, krypton, xenon and radon. So they have discovered these noble gases through the method of fractional distillation of liquid air. That is, air was cooled to a very low temperature to convert it into a liquid. So by this method of fractional distillation of liquid air, William Ramsey and William Travers, they have discovered the noble gases. Now, let us have a look at Antoine Lavoisier's experimental study, which helps us to know about the components of air. As you see here in the picture, this is the experimental setup that Lavoisier had used to conduct the experiment. The apparatus was set up as you see here in this picture. It has a curved neck to retort, a bell jar that had trapped air inside, mercury that was taken in this curved neck to retort, a trough that contained mercury in it and a furnace. So mercury, as you see here, it was taken in this curved nectar retort and mercury was heated for several days, say for about 12 days. Now on heating this mercury in this curved nectar retort, the scientist had observed that there were small red colored balls, as you see here in this picture, that were formed on the heated surface of mercury. He also observed that there was an increase in level of mercury in the trough here. Now, let us see what were the conclusions that the scientist had come across while conducting the experiment. From this experiment, he concluded that oxygen that is present in the retort, this oxygen combined with the mercury that was taken here, so oxygen combined with mercury and it formed the product mercury oxide. It was this mercury oxide that was seen as red colored balls or a red layer on the surface of mercury. He also concluded that the level of mercury in the trough here it rose about 1 by 5th of the original volume of mercury that was initially present in this trough here. Now this is because mercury has occupied the space of the used up oxygen that was there in this bell jar. That is oxygen in this bell jar had combined with mercury in order to form the product mercury oxide. And thus, the oxygen was removed by mercury on heating. So the oxygen from this bell jar was used up by this mercury. And on heating, that oxygen combined with mercury to form the product mercury oxide. So all this oxygen that was there in this bell jar, this retort, it was used up by mercury. So from this experiment, 
he concluded that that is the reason why the level of mercury had increased by about one fifth of the original volume of mercury that was initially there in this trough. So from this experiment, he concluded that the active part of air that was removed by mercury was named as oxygen. And the remaining inactive part of air that was present in this bell jar that he named as nitrogen gas. So this experiment that was conducted by Antoine Lavoisier is an experimental evidence to prove the components that are present in air.